Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Thursday, May 9th. As you might be able to tell, not at home, not at the usual studio. We are house-sitting for the next week or so, so not going to look the same, not going to have all the same graphics and edits and all that good stuff, but wanted to talk to you guys about rookie minicamp. Jaguars rookie minicamp starts tomorrow. As promised, we've got a rookie minicamp preview here today. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com shop, pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I'm wearing right now. Become a channel member right here on YouTube. Get access to some cool perks, including discounts over at ginjag.com shop. So again, thank y'all so much for being here. Let's get into this rookie minicamp preview. So Rookie minicamp. It's exciting because it's the first time that you're out there on the grass. It's the first time that you've seen anything closely related to football in quite some time. But you really don't get a whole lot of information from these things, right? Uh, Who's maybe a little bit bigger than you thought in person, faster than you thought? What is the demeanor of these these players out there on the practice field? Uh, You're obviously hoping to get out of here unscathed. That's the main thing. Uh, not sustain any injuries. Rookie minicamp will be this weekend, right? Friday through Sunday, media will be allowed out there tomorrow, Friday, May 10th. I will be out there, so we'll try to collect as much information as I possibly can so we can uh, provide some good analysis here, rookie minicamp recap. So we're going to run through some of the prospects that I'm excited to see. Obviously, all the draft picks are going to be vital You don't draft a player to uh, not have them make the football team, especially in a a year like this where the Jaguars absolutely need to push, need to get more depth, more talent throughout this roster, um, and try to push to get back into the playoffs and then make noise once they get into the playoffs, right? So all these picks matter. Uh, Some of the UDFAs we're going to look at as well. Jarvis Landry going to be out there. Ever heard of him? We'll dive into it right now. So first round pick, Brian Thomas Jr. He's going to be rocking number seven. How does he look? Like I've watched pretty much every catch of his, every target of his throughout his career, but it's different when you're out there on the field. How does he look? Like This is an insane athlete, a guy with an insane physical profile, six foot three, 210 pounds, almost 33 inch arms, 40 inch vert almost, four three three forty 40 yard dash. Like how does he look out there? And then second round pick Mason Smith, his LSU teammate, same thing. There's a rare combination of size, length, athleticism. Does it pop out there? This is a player that, based on why the Jaguars drafted him, he should look like he's on a different level physically from a lot of the rest of these guys that are out there, you know, along the offensive and defensive line. He should look more impressive. Absolutely. Uh, Jarian Jones, DeAndre Prince, the two corners that were drafted by the Jaguars. I'm just excited to see that speed out there. The Jaguars have not had many of those sub 4-4 type DBs recently. You know, both of these guys ran in the 4-3s. Both of them are close to six feet tall. N- neither of them has like great length, but their athleticism, the speed combined with the vertical explosive ability, I'm excited to see that out on the practice field. You've not seen a lot of that in Jacksonville for quite some time, really. Javon Foster, he's another one, man. I know he doesn't have big-time long speed, uh, ran like a 5'3", 40-yard dash, but I want to see that length. I want to see that short area explosiveness. This is a very experienced college football player. Started every game the last three years. Like The traits, the experience, I want to see if that shows up out there. I really do. Jordan Jefferson. This is going to be an interesting one, right? Uh, I know it won't be full contact. Probably no real hitting. But this man did 34 bench press reps with over 33-inch arms. He is as strong as they come. I want to see him rock some sleds, some bag drills. Maybe put a coach on their butt. Obviously not advocating for that. But I want to see that pop in his hands with his strength. You're not going to get it against opposing players or against teammates in this one, I don't think, but you will see him on the sleds. You will see him on the bag drills. I want to see those hands pop. Keelan Robinson, another one. Like I cannot wait to see that speed and explosiveness that you saw at Texas. A running back named Robinson wearing number seven last year. 
was not Bijan. It was Keelan. And he's never been a full-time back. Look at the guys he's played with, right? Bijan Robinson, Roshan Johnson, Jonathan Brooks. But Keelan Robinson, when he gets the football in his hands, is explosive. He is, you know, a big play waiting to happen. You know, right around 4-4, 140 yard dash, I believe. But I think he plays even faster than that. We're going to see it out there tomorrow. I'm excited for that. How does Cam Little look, right? This guy was drafted in the sixth round to be the Jaguars' starting kicker. This is the beginning of his NFL journey to maybe being a starting kicker in year one. You heard him on the press conference call. After being drafted by the Jaguars, he thought he nailed the pre-draft process. He improved during his final year um, in in college, and he's a guy that has a big leg, can make it from 50-plus yards, is very good on kickoffs, uh, never missed an extra point, I don't believe. So can he show the consistency that he needs to to give the coaches confidence that he can be that guy to make a big kick once the regular season starts? We'll see how that plays out. Uh, Miles Cole, probably the closest thing we've seen to a Trayvon Walker from a physical and athletic profile. What does he look like moving around out there? Uh, He's not Trayvon Walker, folks. Trayvon Walker was the first overall pick. Miles Cole was a seventh-round pick. But they have similar profiles. That's obviously why the Jaguars were interested. Miles Cole has insane length. I mean, 37-inch arms is insane. How does he look? Uh, Trayvon Walker came in. We knew he could be a great run defender, a really good dropper in coverage, a playmaker. Can can Miles Cole do any of that? We'll start to find out this weekend. Uh, Jarvis Landry, as I mentioned, he's going to be out there. Can he prove that he's healthy at 31 years old, that he should stick around? I mean, the Jaguars, they pretty much have first dibs on this guy, right? If he's healthy fully recovered from the ankle injury that held him out of the entire 2023 season. Can he prove that he should stick around in Jacksonville? Can he be versatile enough, explosive enough, reliable enough, which that has been kind of his calling card, strong, strong hands in the right place at the right time. Could the Jaguars use a player like that? Is he fully healthy? We're going to find out what he looks like. And speaking of those receivers, like, Obviously, Brian Thomas Jr. is the main attraction, but I think Joshua Cephas, Wayne Ruby, some of these other undrafted free agents, they're going to have a chance to maybe compete for that final wide receiver spot in Jacksonville. And I really want to see, for me, Joshua Cephas, because this is a guy I thought should have been drafted. Uh, So we'll see how that plays out, how those guys look out there. Steven Thomas, Oregon interior offensive lineman. This dude is 340 pounds. That just will be a sight to see. 340 pounds out there on the football field. A guy who can be a bouncer at the club. I think that he's just difficult to get around in pass protection. How is the movement skills? How do they look out there compared to a lot of other folks? Andre Carter, he feels like he could be a sneaky one to really compete for the roster because he is strong. He's a good run defender. I think there is pass rush upside. Uh, we'll see how he plays out, right? And then Josh Proctor, I don't know how he cracks the safety depth chart because look at the safety depth chart. I mean, you've got Andre Sisco, Antonio Johnson, Darnell Savage, whether you want to put him at safety or nickel, uh, Andrew Winger, Daniel Thomas. But Josh Proctor is a guy that very easily could have been drafted mid-day three. Didn't happen for him. So there will be a lot of intrigue with these undrafted free agents, even more intrigue with the rookies that were drafted high up in this draft class and throughout the class, and then obviously Jarvis Landry as well. What's that going to look like out there? Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com shop to pick up some new Duval gear. You can become a channel member right here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one.